If you want your mixes and masters to sound as good or potentially better than commercially released tracks on the radio or on streaming services or anywhere people consume music, then you need to know what makes a track competitive and how to make a track competitive. My name's Josh, I'm a mastering engineer and in this video I'm gonna discuss competitive masters, what you need to know. I'm pretty excited about this video. It's a topic that I've been meaning to do for quite some time now. I'm also in an absolutely great mood because I got my Charizards back from PSA. And would you look at that? Focus, focus. Two tens. Woo! It's a good day. It's gonna be a good video. Been waiting two years for them, so it's a pretty big deal. And stick around to the end of the video because I'll show you two of my masters in completely different genres and I'll show you how they sound competitive to one another, even though they sound quite different. Now, just a little bit of context about the video. This is coming from the perspective of a mastering engineer. I receive mixes from a variety of different mixing engineers and therefore different talents or different levels of ability of mixing. So I receive bad mixes, okay mixes, or even great mixes. It's a combination of all, and it's my job to analyze them and make them sound as good as I can. So this video is going to be more based on that kind of perspective. Mastering can help, but will never completely fix a really bad mix. The better the arrangement, the better the recording, the better the recording, the better the mix, the better the mix, the better the master. And if you line all these up correctly, this is basically as competitive as music can be. So how do I know if my music is competitive? Competitive implies there is a comparison between your track and other tracks. So in order to have a competitive track, you need to make your track sound as good or potentially better than commercially released songs, e.g. your reference tracks. Now you might be thinking good or better are very subjective and you're absolutely right. And my answer to this is you're probably just overthinking it. Anybody who can listen can tell if something sounds better than something else. They know when something sounds bad, they know when something sounds good. Over time, you will refine and hone your critical listening ability, and this will allow you to better determine whether your music is competitive. But the core issue here isn't really determining if your track is competitive, it's determining why isn't your track competitive. The why is the key word there. You need to be able to objectively distinguish what is different between your track and the reference tracks. And to be able to do this effectively, it requires a whole ton of critical listening practice and technical practice. And this is why I always say there is no quick fixes in proper mixing and mastering. You're probably well aware that this channel is all about telling you what you need to hear and not what you want to hear. I'm not gonna sell you on some bullshit technique that is exciting to look at. I'm telling you what actually works. Here's four examples of why your track may not be competitive. These are just examples. I'm not telling you that these are problems with all your mixes, but this is the kind of thing that we're looking for. Your reference tracks might have a very tight and clear sounding low end, where your tracks might sound boomy or muddy or loose in the low end. Your reference tracks might have rich and supportive and even punchy fat low mids, where your track might sound boxy, resonant or hollow. Your reference tracks might have snappy and punchy high mids, where your track might be harsh and spiky and somewhat fatiguing to listen to. Your reference track might have open, controlled and consistent top end, where your track might be dull, inconsistent, too bright or potentially like sibilant or spiky top end. These are just four examples in each kind of frequency band so you know the objective differences that we're looking for between your music and a reference track. Here's another example. Let's say that you're working on a hip hop track and then you compare your mix or master to a commercially released mix or master. So you might play your track and then you might play some Eminem or Drake or Doja Cat or something, you know, something big commercially and with a reasonably high budget. And then you flick back to your track and you make this face. Yours probably sounds worse. Now what I want you to do here is actually listen for the objective differences. Is there any description that comes to mind straight away? You need to use that information. Maybe your vocal is a bit thin. Maybe your entire mix is a bit dull. 
or maybe your entire balance is completely off. There are 101 billion techniques that we can use to address issues like this, but possibly you may not know what you're actually hearing and therefore you don't know what technique to use. But that is completely normal and it's okay. You will develop this critical listening technique over time and with education. And one day you'll become bloody inspector gadget of audio techniques. You need to continually compare your track to commercially released tracks and use techniques to improve your music until one point you get to comparing your track and then you say, yeah, they stand up next to each other. And I know you're hearing this and you're probably thinking, I just can't do that. I just can't get mine to sound as good. And this might sound really brutal, but you're just, you're right. <laughs> you simply can't with your level of experience. And that's okay, as long as you continue to strive to be better and practice your critical listening and technical skills. I don't want this video to be disheartening or frustrate you because I know how bloody annoying it can be because I was obviously there at one point as well. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, practice and time makes you able to make competitive sounding music. You can speed up this process a lot by working with a professional audio engineer or if you're lucky enough like me to be working with a mentor to help you get better. But that's kind of why I make these videos. It's to share things that I wish I knew earlier to help you get better at making better music. Finally, I want to discuss the massive elephant in the room, which is loudness. Whenever I say the word competitive, some people think that I'm referring to loudness. So how do I absolutely crush my music into being the absolute loudest as possible? That's not what this video is about. Is loudness important to be competitive? Yes, it actually is. But is louder always better? Absolutely not. In mixing, it's an absolutely great idea to level match your references to your mix so you're not being fooled by loudness. In mastering, do not do this. We need to hear the differences in loudness between our track and a reference track. And by hearing these loudness differences, we can decide how loud we actually want to make our track. We may prefer a more dynamic sound or looser sound for a folky tune. Or we may want to absolutely create a wall of sound for the heaviest death metal track ever. We have the ability now with streaming platforms to determine what loudness musically suits the track. Master to a tasteful level that sounds the best. And for this reason, I rarely use LUFS or RMS meters. I master to a loudness that is musically suitable compared to my reference tracks. Now, some of you are probably like, just give me the LUFS number. My masters usually fall somewhere between minus 14 LUFS and minus six LUFS, short term in the loudest sections. That's a big range. And this will depend on the style of the track, where it's being released, what the arrangement is, what the genre is, how the mix sounds. There is no go-to number that you have to aim for to make your tracks competitive. As long as they are musically tasteful compared to one another and they stand up next to each other without you really noticing one sounds worse, then I think that's a job well done. And another little misinformation that I've heard out there, the word competitive does not mean you need to make your track sound the same as a commercially released track or your reference tracks. They're a completely different mix, a completely different song. Why would you try completely copy it? You need to be able to play your track and then your reference tracks and for them to kind of sit in the ballpark of standing up to one another or being musically appropriate compared to one another. For example, if you play an ambient meditation track and its loudness is like around minus 14 LUFS, and then you compare a death metal track at minus six LUFS, they might sound musically appropriate compared to one another and therefore competitive to one another, even though the ambient track should technically be a little bit quieter. Okay, now the audio example, I'm going to show you two masters and show you how they sound completely different, yet they are quite competitive to one another. I didn't mix these, um, just mastered them, so there's a little bit of context. Track number one is by a band called Lamphead. It was mixed by Darcy Long. 
So if you like this sound, I'd recommend going to check him out. And thank you for letting me use your track. This one's called Your Yesterday. Yeah, so once again, mixed by Darcy Long, mastered by myself. If you like that sound, hit us both up. <laughs> I, I personally love it. So thank you again for letting me use that track. This next one is by an artist called Hayden Moon. He mixed it himself. Uh, completely different style, as you can see, compared to these two. Um, but just take a listen. track still has another two minutes to go but um i'll just play two minutes of kind of each track i believe this one was about two minutes yeah 
So, as you can see, completely different genres, but yet they kind of stand up to one another and they sound musically appropriate to one another. If I mastered you and I to be louder than the Lamphead track, it would sound musically just distasteful and not appropriate. So the you and I track sounds a lot more sparse and a lot more kind of spacious and a little bit quieter. But for this genre and this style, you kind of want that. Let's take a look at some loudness measurements just as a little experiment. I haven't actually looked at this. Um, it'll be interesting to see. So if I go to, there it is, waveform stats. So the lamp head track, let's look at this max short term loudness, minus 6.8. So at the very loudest part of the track, that is the peak that it hits in loudness, in LUFS. So minus 6.8. And then let's look at you and I, this max short term loudness. Minus 10.4, so maths. So 3.6 LUFS difference in the loudest section of each track. And that's fine. Like, it sounds great. It sounds musically appropriate. And that's why you should never aim for a target level because it doesn't make sense to make this track as loud as something else or try force it to a level where the limiting is just ruining it. Um, I think you get what I'm, what I'm saying. I'll play them next to each other just so you can kind of get a better idea. Um, but I think it's pretty clear what I'm trying to get at here. You should be catching what I'm throwing. The masters speak for themselves. <laughs> I don't know if anyone plays a bit of chess or follows chess, but you'll you'll get that reference. <laughs> uh, yeah, I hope this video has given you a bit of an overview of what competitive music or competitive mixing and mastering is all about. It's not about making your track sound exactly the same. It's just making your track sound musically appropriate, tasteful, and so it stands up to everything else that's released out there. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, consider subscribing and I'd really appreciate it if you showed it by liking the video. That helps my videos be seen by more people and my channel is actually very close to being monetized. So I appreciate the support so, so, so much. If monetization can help me make more videos, that would be absolutely unreal. I'd love to hire an editor just so I can pump more content out. So thanks again. Thanks for watching. If you've made it this far, you're a true fan. <laughs> Need to take a breath, I'm running out of breath. I'm getting too excited. If you wanna check out some of my work, you can head to joshbartellmastering.com. I'll leave the link in the description below. Otherwise, thank you again, and remember to use your ears.